Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Kali Conversation Hello again. with me, Rick. And me, Nain. And our very special guest, Fernando, Fernando Solis. 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 Solis or Solis? Solis. Solis? Solis. See, I always get names wrong. Have you yeah, noticed this? Yeah, dude. Every time we do this. Did you not nice. hear the, the boxing announcer voice that we just did? <laughs> and you're just going to... The whole build I, 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 up, I ignore all that stuff. Up. So anyways, uh, Fernando here <laughs> is the resident boxing trainer here at the uh, uh, Physique, Physique Magnifique. Magnifique. And um, he's been doing this for about how long? I've been here at this facility for five years now. But how long yes. have you been? Uh, training since I've been five. Jesus. Yeah. I had no choice. Um, no choice. How does, like that, family how does that happen? Like, family yeah. parties. Family parties. It's, family it wasn't parties. even boxing. It's, it was just an event. You know, something else. <laughs> it's just, hey, hey, we're bored. <laughs> Fernando, come, come here. <laughs> Joaquin, come here. Go. <laughs> The, fa- the bad part about it, well, the good, it was good for me because uh, I missed the generation of uh, socks. So if you had no gloves, our parents used to put socks. I was too small to get this, but I remember seeing Holy the fight. Holy shit. I remember seeing my brothers fighting. With and socks in their hands. So, well, socks for protection. You want to make sure you don't hurt each other. <laughs> How thick were these socks? God Just damn. regular socks. What? So as we as we, it was time for my generation to start fighting, we had gloves. We went to the flea market and stuff like that. So that was good. Yeah, because um, that would make you want to quit right away. Fucking <laughs> socks. Oh man, oh man. But so I, you you protect the wrist, but you get athletes put on your face. I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> That's that was, crazy. It made no sense. So are you a professional boxer? No, never turned pro. Never really? turned pro. So you did amateur stuff. I did amateur stuff. What, what's your record over there? Um, I don't remember. Is it is that long ago? You just no, I had a lot of fights. Um, wow. Really? Yeah, I see never a lot of... Track. I never kept track. Um, I see a lot of kids fighting today and their parents go to the practice. The, everybody goes to things. And Feels everybody supports. Uncle, yeah, yeah. I first found my uh, first gym I went to. Uh, I went from South San Francisco to Oakland and back then... South San Francisco didn't have a BART uh, station. Nope. So I had to catch Amtrans wow. to Daly City to catch BART to go to Oakland, walk through the ghetto. So you're giving away your age here because that yeah. was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Dude, so, he's only like 37. So my mom yeah, but said... that's what I'm saying though, 37 39, years ago. 39, 39. Oh, you're 39. Yeah. 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 Well, BART wasn't around then. Yeah. He's um, wow. You were like two years old. <laughs> no, I was. No, he was. He was boxing with with uh, socks. I and was that. twelve. I was twelve. You were twelve. Well, wow. So uh, my mom found out I was going to Oakland, and then she said, "Okay, find something on this side." Found something in Redwood City, which was Gladiators Box Boxing Gym. Mm-hmm. They're still there. Um, cool. Caught the bus there and used to wrap my hands on the way to the gym. Go to do my homework on the way to the gym. It was. It ended up being a perfect. Perfect setup. How long were you there? Wow. There, I was 16 years. 16 years so there. So from 12? <coughs> four years. No, no. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, you were there at the gym for 16 years. I was at years. the gym for 16 years. Yeah, dude, yeah. that's not and four never years. <laughs> never turned pro. And what, what was the reason behind that? Yeah. Um, I was on my way. Uh-huh. Um, I was probably like three or four amateur fights from turning pro, and I had an accident. Uh, Outside of the ring. Outside of the ring. Fuck. Something happened. That's the thing that's um, crazy. Yeah. What happened? You but so, I ended up, well, I don't want to talk too much about it, but I ended up getting stabbed, uh, punctured my lung. Doctor told me to stay out of the ring for a year. I stayed out oh, six geez. months. I'm uh, I'm Superman, so everything's half for me. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> we all think that. <laughs> six months, got in sparring. Real Mexican, huh? Got tagged. <laughs> got tagged and re- re-punctured. Uh... The second time turned into depression. You can't work. You can't go to work. You're on disability. Wow. I mean, you really had to do the year. I really had to do the year after that. Uh, and um, more so, movement's my medicine. Right. Movement, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, especially being a, a high energetic kid, to be able to sit down in class, mm-hmm. I had to go run. You know, I was I was the generation where Ritalin started coming in. Yeah, uh, just before or during that time, everybody started popping. pills? Everybody started popping pills, and for thank God, my mom never let me do it. No, she said, I agree. She said you have to find a way. You were the baby then. You know, yeah. Of how many siblings? Three. 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 But uh, all we boys. Twenty three cousins in South San Francisco. <laughs> wow. In this city, we had twenty three cousins. So. so how did all that? turn into training because if I'm, if, if I'm shot like that and I'm thinking, God, my career is over, I can't do anything, 
then all of a sudden you're training. You're uh, a trainer. Actually, actually, that's when I got introduced to the world of drugs. Oh, nice. Yeah, 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 and just... Spiral down. Yeah, food, drugs. I think I got to about 185 pounds. Whew. I'm 5'6". I don't know if you yeah. guys can see. I'm 5'6". You know, so. like you're about an inch taller than me, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Wide. 180. Wide. Uh, dude, yeah. I got up to 195. Didn't care. Packs of chips ahoy. Yeah, my whole field, thing. I'm at one. Wow. How long, did, how, how long was that spiral? Not to get too deep into it. Two, two and a half years. What changed? Yeah, well, what got you out? Uh, my wife, my wife, uh, she really saw it. She supported it. You know, she, I mean, she didn't support it and enable right, it, right, but right. she never quit. Um, so you guys were together through all that. Yeah. And then she told me, uh, you need to get back to the gym. Right. I'm like, who the hell is going to listen to me? I'm all fat and I'm all, nah, I'm not going to the gym. I was, I was embarrassed to go back to the right. gym. Right. No, I bet. Because, you know, your pride at that point is just yeah. in the, Especially in the Mexican gutter. pride. I've noticed you guys really yeah, have this thing about. Yeah, machismo is, is, yeah. is, is a real I mean, thing. It's a real it's thing. Not <laughs> even, it's, it's not even a, a at, joke. At the time it was. At yeah. the time it was, you know, and it was just, no, I'm not going to let people see me like this. And then what happened ended up happening. So I go to the gym just to go say hi to my coach, and then I ended up being a bucket boy, you know, and yeah. I think that humbled me. That humbled me to the point where it was it wasn't embarrassing. It was I was helping my coach. Right. You know, all these coaches trained me for free, right. never charged me a dollar. And then it was like okay. Really? So sixteen years and they never charged never you. Never charged me a dollar. Wow. You must have saw something in his today. Yeah. Like, Dude, yeah. that that could have been a big part of why the, the pride was so low because it's like all the time that these people put into me. Yeah. And now all of a sudden I can't I physically can't, I can't do it. For yeah. them and, yeah. And really make them proud yeah. because now I'm this. Wow. I get it. One of these days we're going to get the, the whole stabbing thing into, into <laughs> light, but not today. Not today. We're moving on. <laughs> yeah, we'll so you, you got out of it. Your, your wife was with you throughout that whole time. I mean, what, not, you know, not to get too deep into that, but how old were you when you guys met? Uh, 20. I must have been about 26. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 26. She said 16 years. You should have had her on the show. She like a more interesting lady. Yeah. Well, she put up with all that. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? He's That's rising. He's like four fights away. Yeah. He's <laughs> coming home battered and bruised from fights anyway. So she's like, okay, I I'm putting up with this. Then he gets stabbed. And it's like, oh, crap. He almost died. And it wasn't even in the ring. Right. And you then know, the you spiral know, down. from the outside. And it's like, holy <laughs> Shit. Because <laughs> yeah, no. that's what I'm piecing in my head. I'm putting the time frame. I'm like, making it sound worse the whole thing, thing, the whole thing. I'm like, well, was you're bad? in a better place, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's a lot so, to take in as a so wife. So fast forward from yeah. that to when I met you about five years ago. Mm -hmm. Do you see what we were doing? You, you you saw something different than what we were doing, but mm -hmm. it was relatable to what you were doing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How did you get there? How did you get to that mindset? So <laughs> having all those relatives in my house, uh -huh. you know, I'm the Mexican family with my uncle in the garage. Oh, my, yeah. my, my cousin, hundred lived people in, in the <laughs> my cousin lived in the back shack. I oh, slept on the floor. Nine people in know. a one bedroom apartment. You know, yeah. Yeah. well, we were in a house, uh -huh. um, but my uncle, who was in and out of prison, <laughs> had all these. This is a great story. So <laughs> this has got to be a movie of the week. I think. I was just having a conversation with my parents, like, uh -huh. why did you let him babysit? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, shit. <laughs> You're gonna blame me. <laughs> so uh, he was oh in and out God. of prison, and he was that just, you know, the '60s hippie Mexican from Oakland. Oh, jeez. You Tabacos. know, yeah, had the long hair and um, oh, long hair. You know, shit, full <laughs> circle. And uh, break the circle, <laughs> damn it, cut your hair three generations, three generations. So, he had me doing push ups on my fingers, he, oh, had, he, he had me doing wall sits. Oh, wow, that sounds like, like when you were a kid, yeah, when I was a kid, you know, and yeah. it was it was just what we did, you know, and it yeah. was uh, he was bored, yeah, to kill you time. know, I was going from palms to yeah. fingertips, fungs, and then take away a finger in the hole, wow. really, yeah. How many, what was the lowest number of fingers that you got to? I could still, to this day, push up off. Really? Hand. Yeah. Dude, but he that's... also told me the stronger your fingers, the stronger your fist. Right. So, I need, I need to do more finger work. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't count. I... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> not enough. I don't I'm know more, what you guys were thinking. I'm more I'm just... developed here, oh, not okay. so much here. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Different muscle group altogether. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, my yeah, bad, yeah. my bad. Now, but, uh, you and I have had several conversations when we're here at the gym, and, and you know, I, I respect the stuff that you do. And, and one of the things that I notice when you're playing with your students, because mm-hmm. He does train out of this this facility, and he puts um, everything on with his student in this yeah, ring. Yeah, mm-hmm. in this ring, and um, I see you do a lot of things that are not normal boxing stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. tell me about that because that stuff is crazy. Because I, you know, because we do the same thing in, in what we do. Mm-hmm. We're not very traditionalist. That everybody hates us for that. Yeah, but I'm I'm looking at your stuff and I'm like, you're not traditionalist either. Yeah, at all. Um. So I had a, a mentor of mine. He's out in South, San Francisco. He actually just moved to Hawaii. This whole coronavirus got him. He shut down his gym. He's like gone. He's like, you know what? He's okay. had enough with the Bay Area. Yeah. Um, he had his opinions and went back to Hawaii. And I said, okay, cool. I respect that. So Matt Tripp, this is from you. Uh, what did he say? He said, it's the language of movement. You, you, you have to be able to speak a common language with your clients, your members, your fighters. You could have all this information, but if you don't speak the same language, it's not going to matter. Right. We call that verbiage. I like okay. that. Okay. So if verbiage yeah. isn't correct. He'll, he'll say the ABCs, and it's so, so stupid, the right. ABCs. Air. If you don't have air, you can't pressurize. You can't... Ah, you can't... To recuperate. Right, right, especially so when you... he says air, you have to know, and then how much air are we exerting? <coughs> you know, are we, a, are we a rice rocket with a big-ass muffler? Right. And a little it Honda ring? Yeah. Or are we big hot rod? <laughs> what are we expending? Right. And then can we shift gears through our breath? So that's a whole another one. Balance, what does balance come from? Balance is really the pressure... Um, the neurologic connection from your brain to your muscles. You know, if my nose is ahead of my toes, I'm probably going to fall forward. Right. If my nose is behind my side, I'm probably going to fall that way unless I could bite down with that big toe and anchor down. Right. Little things like that. So balance. Knowing how to use the inside and outside of the foot. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. crazy. This is, this, is this is amazing. And this is air... Uh, balance. balance and then coordination. What is coordination? Yeah. Neural co- connection of everything. Can right, you right. fire at the same time? Yeah, how quickly can does do this come out when you think it? Uh huh. Can I go boom, 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 or can I just touch you with my jab? Keeping the same rhythm without getting emotionally involved. Can you wow. rev your engine without going? Rah! Right, it's not an ego trip, but it's more of just the, the tuning like, that oh, you did. I'm just going fast. Wow. See, yeah. uh, and oh, again, that's... that's what I've always admired about you. Um, ever since I met you, we, we, we've had conversations, you and I, and, and I think we, we kind of hit on the same cylinders. And, and our conversations are... <laughs> really? Cylinders? <laughs> well, because he's revving an engine. Of course I'm going to bring that up, <laughs> God damn it. Hey, I'm trying to relate to you the, know, uh, the story, right? Right? Thank you're you. You're trying to speak the same language. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah. And that's another thing, too. You know, you, and especially today, we're getting all these intellectual people doing training. Yes. There's so many intellectual people. Yep. No real-world experience? I, you said it, not me. <laughs> I'll take the blame. <laughs> no real-world experience. If you want to punch him, I'd like to see a nice jab. He's not an intellectual, But what I mean though, from intellectual one. is somebody who teaches somebody, this is right. the way it is. This is the structure, yeah. but A, B, C, this. And right. then this is what they know. Right. And if you see a lot of people who come from martial arts or people who come from fighting backgrounds, mm-hmm. we're very intuition. Mm-hmm. We feel Yeah, things. more like Neanderthals are just going, Ugh. Just, yeah. just let me see that. Yeah. Let me figure it out because I don't want to lose. I think that's where the artist thing comes from, though. It's a feeling versus right. a structure. Intellect versus intuition. Right, you right. Know? And you, you'll go to the speed bag and, hold on, wait a minute. So you mean I go like this, one, two, and they're trying to figure it out. Right. Wait, Two plus two is whatever. It's like no, listen to the rhythm. Ba 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 ba. And then they go, wait, 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 wait. So you mean? And they're still fighting it, right? And they're still trying to go one, two, one. And you can see their head going right to their head. Right. And it's like, hold on, you're thinking with the wrong thing. Right. Right. So this is where, where. Meditation, changed my life. Change my life. Really? Because it, everything's balanced, right? Yeah, everything's yeah, fast or slow. 
And then if you think, and then I had such a good meditation teacher. Um, he he told me this isn't meditation. <laughs> it's not sitting in the trees and yeah. meditation at its purest form is being in a certain amount of brain waves and being able to control your brain waves. Right. Can you be meditative in a crazy city? Everybody going crazy. The good people can. Can I meditate with this speed bag going crazy and this bell going ding, 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 and some ghetto music going on? <laughs> you know, can, can I still be in, and focus. in those brain waves right. with all that reaction? And that's where I came to find, that's where I strive. You know, I need chaos. I need, I need cousins jumping off of walls to do my homework because uh, I need and, to. And you were born, right, right, you you were born that way. I mean, that's what you that's, grew up that's in. What I so grew that's up why in. you're so comfortable. Yeah. And this made it easy for you to, to, to relate to that. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, so yeah. How, how did that become part of your teaching I methodology? Made I made it happen. Really? I made it happen. When I was a kid, uh, I wanted to be a teacher. Oh, shit. Yeah. You're, you're a second guest that wanted to be a teacher since really? they were a kid. Really? Yeah. Well, though she gave it up, became a cop, but you know, you, <laughs> you're, you're a teacher. <laughs> so I wanted to be a teacher, and then, I, and part of the reason was I was like, you fucking suck. <laughs> right. You suck. You are so not getting my attention. <laughs> right. Like, I want to learn. Right, but, but you're not you getting to me. You suck. <laughs> yeah, I've had many of those kind of teachers. You know, and okay. I, and I get that. And, and it, what sucked about it was uh, I, I grew up uh, being Spanish was my first language. Right. So going into first grade, long story short, I was put in the slow classes because back then they didn't have ESL. Yeah. So yeah, they yeah. put you in the slow classes. I was mad. I was pissed because I knew I was smart as shit. Right. Um, so then I didn't have the verbiage to be able to communicate what I wanted. Right. So... I knew I was wrong in my actions, and this mm -hmm. is where the disobedience comes in. But I knew they weren't right either. There you go. So I wanted them to feel my pain. Yeah, you if, know if I'm going to suffer, fuck you. <laughs> right. we're all going to suffer. You don't believe this shit either. <laughs> right. you know? and, then, and then you start growing up and be like, you know what? You're stupid too. And then I go to high school, you know, and I, I came to find a lot of these people were very intellectual. But they didn't have the intuition to be able to speak to another child right. or, or have a feeling. You know, of... it, it's funny that you say that because early on when I was teaching this guy, um, I would tell him, you know, it's important that you go to the level of the person that you're teaching. Mm. You know, just so that they understand what you're talking about. Because yeah. if you're so high up on your intellectual oh, yeah. and you're talking to somebody who has no clue what you're talking about, you need to come down to them for a minute mm -hmm. and say, here is what I'm trying to do and go slow and do all these things until they can get them to speed up and then come up to where you are. Yeah. You know, and I love that you're, you're saying this because you're right. A lot of the teachers don't are do that. stupid <laughs> because they don't get, they didn't get that. Well, they were and, taught. And kind of wondering. They, yeah. were, they were taught these things yeah. from step by step, from by studies step by step. and right. research. And this is how you I should was teach. one of those people where I was like, I wasn't in your fucking research. Right. I wasn't in your studies. Right. And honestly, I feel to the point where you've never met somebody like me. Yeah, and and that's like how I carry myself. It's a big cultural know? clash. That's how I carried myself uh, in boxing, too. Okay. You know, it was... You've never met somebody like me. You know, anybody that would judge you. Oh, oh. you're too short. Or, oh, you're too knucklehead. Or whatever it may be. And it's like, you've never... Seen. And then... They you go you. that with a chip on your shoulder, right. and that's what you train with. Watch, fucker. Watch. Yeah, now you want to prove that you get that snap in your, right. in your, in your right. punch, though. I, I like it. Right. But going back to the ABCs, yeah. right, and I think this is what you said, you know, dropping down to the level. I would like to believe, <laughs> I would like to believe that I start at that level. Right. And never have to drop to that level. Because you're always there. Because we start from the ground we'll start from can you move one hand right. and not the other hand can you mindfully not move this yeah, hand because now you're just breathing up here right because all the breathing should Instead come from stuff, yeah. depending on whatever movement we're doing right yeah short right but already if you got a kid that's going ah! <laughs> yeah. and you say just lay down don't move this hand move, move this, this hand. hand already they go 
now they're focusing. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because you can't think about it. You can't There's think no about way it. to think about it. You have to just do it. You have to feel it. So already, even some of the parents will go, how do you get them to calm down? <laughs> Tell them to breathe. Just tell them to breathe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Breathe. You, because what, <laughs> most kids are like little puppies. Yeah. Right, like, right in the chest. Yeah. They're still trying to please everybody by going roll. Yeah. And what goes back, and then we go back to the meditative states. Right. If I slow down your breathing. Slow down this. You slow down this, they're going to be more receptive. Now, if you get into a chemical reaction like dopamine, mm -hmm. they release dopamine. Some people get so much dopamine released, they go get the hemp pants. <laughs> they fucking turn into vegans and shit. Yeah.